Hello and thank you for watching. Today I wanted to look at just a single Qigong movement, uh, explain some of the details of that movement, at least in terms of how I approach it and I understand it, and um, hopefully that will give you some useful insight not only into that move, but into uh, Qigong practice in general. So let's look at the Qigong move uh, I have in mind first. That is, this move is single hand supporting the heavens. Full name is single hand supporting the heavens to regulate the spleen and the stomach. We're just standing, feet about shoulder width apart, hands at our sides. Pointing our fingertips towards each other, the hands come up about chest height. From here, we turn our right palm down. I'm going to mirror this. So this is the right palm turning down, left palm turning up. The right hand goes down as the left hand goes up. We turn both wrists over, palms facing in, the hands come back towards each other. The hand that's going down just keeps going down. The hand that's going up we turn the palm first away from us and then overhead. Right hand up, left hand down. Turn both hands over, bring the arms back. Keep the weight over the heels and the body upright. Shoulders relaxed. Switching hands. When one hand has gone as high and the other as low as they can, Point the fingers up and down and turn both wrists over. Bring the hands back towards each other. Switching hands one more time. Turn the hands over. We bring the hands back when they become level with each other. We turn both palms to face down, bringing both hands down and to our sides. Then close. Very good. So there's a couple things I wanted to cover off. First is uh, the interplay of yin and yang. One hand is rising, the other hand is setting down. The upward hand, the yang hand goes up as the right hand or the other hand, the yin hand goes down. It doesn't matter which hand is which as long as they're both moving away from one point and moving towards one point, roughly in the center from where we started. Have both hands move same distance away from that point, opposite directions, one way, and coming back. This turnover points at the end, the extremities, the hands turn over, and they come back. This is the transformation of yin into yang and yang into yin. Uh, I'll try and explain it this way. If you're on a uh, picture of the globe with the North Pole, and imagine yourself walking towards the North Pole, you're taking step after step after step. You step and you're at the North Pole. You take one more step forward. Which direction are you now heading? You're heading south. So by passing the pole, the furthest extremity, by moving in the same direction, you end up going in the opposite direction from north to south. The hands moving upwards, continue to move them upwards, keep them moving forward, 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 forward. And now as they continue to move forward, they're now moving down. This is the interplay of yin and yang. As they move down, they keep moving down as far as they can keep going. And then from there, keep moving forward and now the hand that was descending is now rising. This is the interplay of yin and yang within the Qigong movement, single hand supporting the heavens. Uh, the hands need to be coordinated because the movement of yin and yang uh, balance each other. And so if we have one hand not enough up, too much down, or too much up and not enough down, then the move is not balanced. And we need the yin and yang to be balanced. The equal and opposite movement coming through and gathering back. The second half of the name, single hands supporting heavens to regulate 
the spleen and stomach, or the stomach and spleen. This is an example of a translation which is accurate, but fails to give you a full idea of uh, what the meaning is. Um, sh to keep it from being too long a conversation, let's just say uh, spleen and stomach, or stomach and spleen, is shorthand for meaning the digestive system. So this move is one meant to help regulate and balance the digestive system. In Chinese medicine, the process of di digestion is to take in food, separate it out, take out the clear and separate that from the turbid, send the clear up, send the turbid down. So in this movement, uh, through this area of the abdomen where the, all the digestion happens, and uh, also where the associated channel, the spleen, a uh, stomach channel, which travels along the front of the torso, also down to the legs and up to the face, but moving right across this area where the hands are traveling, they're moving, sending up the clear, sending down the turbid. Right. If there is uh, too much up and not enough down, then, in terms of the physical uh, symptoms of regulating the spleen and the stomach, we can get hiccups, we can get nausea, we can get vomiting. And of course, if we have too much down and not enough up, then we get loose stools, we get diarrhea, among a large range of other things. But to give you an idea of the concept of regulating the spleen and stomach, the raising of the clear, the setting down of the turbid, and how to have them uh, regulated. So we know, uh, or I've mentioned that the spleen and stomach, all the digestion processes happen here. There is a channel on the front of the body that comes over here, over which our hands are moving. So we can think of this as something where the um, image of smoothing out these channels, regulating the channels, getting the balanced movement of the up and down, the yin and the yang, uh, will have an effect, a translation into the functioning of the body. This imagery is very good, but if we only focus on the imagery, we'll miss another important part of the move and its function and effect, which is simply, we take one hand, we bring it up overhead, we reach it fairly high, from there reach a little higher, from there extend the hand up and stretch out to the fingertips, then feel the stretch that you get through the torso, from the arm, the front of the shoulder, down the ribs, down through to the abdomen. That sensation there, that lengthening of the tissues, feeling that, I think, personally, is more important than knowing what this channel is called, where this channel uh, goes to what the points on the channel is na are named. Uh, you don't need to know those things to have the effect. You don't even need to know the description in Chinese medicine of the separation of the clear and the turbid uh, to have uh, an ability to do this move in a way that benefits you. Take one hand, reach it up. Reach it a little higher, extend, and then stretch all the way out to the fingertips. Be aware of that stretch and that lengthening. And especially if we're doing the other hand, setting and anchoring the other side and keeping the other side set down. Draw the hands back. Let's go through the move a couple of times, paying attention to that physical sensation, that physical alignment from here, anchor one side, Extend both sides out to the fingertips. Palms facing in, bring the hands back. Switching hands, the hand that's going down just keeps going down. The other hand extends up. Point the fingers up and down. Turn both wrists over. Draw the hands back. When the hands become level with each other, both palms facing down, bring the hands down to our sides. Single hand supporting the heavens to regulate the stomach and spleen. I hope this information is helpful for you. I hope it gives you some guidelines in terms of 
paying attention to the physical sensation, the opening, the elongation, the rooting, the grounding, the alignment, the structure of not just this Qigong move, but all of your Qigong practice. Thank you for watching. Take care. Keep learning. Keep practicing. We'll see you again.